I have here some Star of Bethlehem blooming since I transplanted it a few feet earlier this spring. I didn't know if I had lost it. I didn't know what I was transplanting, so I'm excited to see it. The scientific name is Ornithogalum umbilatum. <laughs> These scientific names. I have to have the spelling cheat uh, pronunciations on my website. It's also in the uh, Sparagaceae family, which was formerly the Lily family. And so it's Star of Bethlehem, but it's also known as Grass Lily. Uh, you can see because uh, all of this around it looks like grass. So since it was formerly in the Lily family, uh, and it's got grass, it's also known as Lily Grass. But I like Star of Bethlehem. And it's a bulb, and just like a tulip, there are three petals and three sepals, which together are called tuples. So we can take a look at that. I don't know if I can see that. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm assuming this one and this one and this one are petals. And then this one, this one, and this one are called sepals, and then together they're called tuples. It's so tiny and cute. So I'm looking at the buds. So there's plenty of buds. So we have one stem that comes to here. It divides, and there's a flower off that way. And then it comes this way. Looks like it's going to continue to divide as there's another stem this way for a bud. And another one this way. <laughs> Funny thing is, is this one only has four petals. But this one also has the six petals and the petals are pointy and it's in the shape of a star, hence Star of Bethlehem. The petals have um, some bright green stripes underneath. Let's check that. Oh my goodness, they do, look. I'm having so much fun studying and learning about my flowers. I don't know as if I've ever looked underneath those. But the leaves are very grass-like and green and have a white stripe running down them. Um, they very much resemble a crocus leaf, but they're somewhat taller. So that's why I often confuse these with crocus leaves because the crocuses are done blooming and I'm like, just leave these here and um, they need to die back. And I don't realize that they're Star Bethlehem. I don't know if you can see that, but that uh, line, I can really see it on this one. I've got to get the light hitting it just right. Um, that line down, it is signature crocus to me but um, it also applies to this. They're just taller. So this plant can naturalize, which is why sometimes I read people complaining that it's invasive, but mine has never, ever been invasive. And I think it might spread more if you have it planted in the lawn, like sometimes people put these kind of bulbs in the lawn um, if, it, if I didn't have it contained in my garden bed, but I still I can't, I can't imagine that. And the leaves turn yellow and die back, disappearing later in the season, just as with me most bulbs. So I'm going to have to get out here and give myself a flag so I know where this is. The important thing about this to remember is the plant is toxic to pets. There is a Missouri native plant called false garlic. Um, I don't know how to say that scientific name, Nothos Gordum bivalve, and it's similar but has yellow-like flowers with pointier petals. I'd previously, in 2017, when I began my uh, flower journal, identified it as um, Iphi Oenum Florum, <laughs> something like that, uh, which is a spring star flower. But now that I've studied this, that's incorrect. Um, and I have photos of this flower going back to 2003. Uh, before that, 
I had my um, regular camera so uh, that would be on print and I'm not sure I have photos of it so I've had this plant for like at least 20 years so I'm just excited to see it again this year it's actually very small but it's a little bit of bright sunshine in my garden